Hey everybody, and we're live. Welcome to another Stripe Dev Chats. My name is Cecil Phillip, and I'm really glad y'all could join us today for this very interesting conversation we're about to have. Um, conversation about a product that I think we definitely need to pay attention to because I think it it gives us a lot of a lot of really interesting opportunities for what we can do inside of our apps, and that's going to be Stripe Identity. And I have my friend here, Hedger Wang from uh, the Identity team, who's going to be talking to us about you know. What is tribe identity and how does it work or why should we even care about it, right? But before we actually dive into it, Hedger, why don't you just give us a really quick introduction? Tell us a little bit about who you are and what do you do? Yeah. Uh, hi, my name is Hedger Wing. I'm the software engineer. I work in the Stripe identity team as a software engineer. And I basically, my job is building the front end um, web application that um, creates a user interface, allow user to use the identification uh, verification flow in browser and devices. Yeah. Nice. So before you were started working on Stripe identity, did you have any background in security or identity verification or anything like that? Or is this kind of like, you know, your, you know, your, your learning experience right now as you're doing it? Actually, it was quite a, like a new learning experience. Previous, my previous jobs were involving with education. Oh, nice. Yes. And, uh, this, Product is actually it's a something that Stripe. I was told like, oh, the we're build, Stripe is building something new, and they want to bring some new blood to like help with to make this product happen, and awesome. that's what I got to mean. Yeah. Okay. So why don't we just go ahead and dive into it? Like, so when we think about what is Stripe identity, I think. Let's say I didn't work here hypothetically. Let's say I didn't work here, and I was like, oh, Stripe has an identity product. The first thing that comes to my mind is. You know, user logins, user signups, OAuth, one-time passwords, all these types of things. Because usually when I think about identity, that's usually what comes to my mind the first time. But this is not what this is, right? Like this is something no, I want to say it's complementary, but it's not that, right? Like we're not storing usernames and passwords and user claims and doing OAuth things with this product, right? So could you give us a little bit of context about like what exactly is Stripe Identity? Yeah. So the first thing, I think you're right. Uh, this is not like an authentication product that like many websites, for example, one-time password, or like one password, you can just re have something that you can use it as a login, universal login. No, it, it's not. It's actually used for verification, for personal identity. Mm -hmm. So at high level, it's like a, this is a service that uh, Stripe provides that allows the user to verify they're actually the person who they who they claim they are, yeah. And uh, majority of use cases, like actually, for example, um, many uh, crypto cryptocurrency, like market uh, per service provider, they have need to be legally compliant. So they have to uh, implement something they call KYC, which is a know your customer, and which means that their customer has to prove provides document and. Pro which prove that they are the, actually the person who they are. And or, of course, I think I would just bring up, there's other many other use cases that um, is for merchant that need to use like uh, to protect their customer or uh, or prevent cases like a fraudulent transaction. Yeah, this is a place where we use integrated with a Stripe uh, identity as a part of like a, the integration flow. Okay, so, so like you said, so like we're not storing usernames and passwords. We're not doing like, security authentication, but if I wanted to say, hey, my name is Cecil and I want to sign up for your platform and for some reason you need like an actual ID, I'm guessing like a, yeah. I don't, let's say like a driver's license as an example, right? Like, is this a real driver's license? Is this actually Cecil in the driver's license? Is it the valid driver's license? So on and so forth, right? And I can think about a lot of different use cases where people might want to do that. Yeah. So let's say, I don't know, let's say I'm signing up to be a driver, right? Like, I'd love to know that this driver actually has a driver's license. I think that's an important thing to have, right? So you want to, like, validate those types of identities. That's or, true. Yeah. or something like, um, hey, I'm applying for a job in another country, in the United States, as an example, and I might have, I, don't, I have an Antiguan passport, I have a Jamaican passport, or whatever the case is, right? Like, I have some other things. You know, we want to be able to validate and identify that people are who they say they are. But again, we're not talking about usernames and passwords and emails. We're talking about like actual government-based IDs, right? Is that what we're considering? Yeah, it is true. Um, for instance, um, 
um, say that you're traveling to uh, like international traveler, you're going to San Francisco, we just get off the plane and it's very likely you want to get a car rental. So the question like for a car rental company is that, is that, okay, how do you provide that you actually, you have a valid uh, like a driver license or even passport to make sure that you can actually legitimately, uh, you can legally rent the car also it doesn't do anything suspicious, such just like a dumping the car to somewhere, and it will, of course they will lose money, right? So the car rental company need to use some kind of service to prove that yeah, this customer is legit. Or you can say uh, you want hire nanny, right? Yeah. But how do you then the nanny is the person who they they claim they are? Or say that you are online marketplaces. There's a lot of people buying things, sell things. And how do you know that whether there's a buyer or a seller, they're actually the, the right person? They're not any like a fake user created by, say, AI, something like that? Yeah, there's yeah. many ways to do that. Right. So then if I'm a business and I want to be able to, well, one, you know, fraud and identity theft and all these types of things are, are real problems. So if I want to, like, be able to reduce fraud, if I want to be able to just do, I don't know, like, document verification or biometric inf um, verification or any of these types of things, I can use Stripe Identity, which is exposed to us via an API, right? So it's not like something else, right? It's an API that I can have in my application and I could use these API endpoints, so I'm guessing upload documents and have those documents verified and get the verification results, right? Like after, you know, work has been processed, right? And we, you know, we've actually done the work to, to verify these things, right? Yeah, that's correct. So Perky helps a lot with a merchant who actually they're building their own marketplace and that they help to deal with a lot of transaction. And one of the big, their biggest concern is a fraudulent users because even you just have one of that can come case it happen, just say per month weekly, you probably will end up losing a lot of money. Yeah. Another thing is that is a, it's not just the API that basically help you to verify the user for you, but also it's a, it take off the burden of be legally compliant. Yeah. For instance, say that you can definitely build a lot of in house, but in order to get everything legally compliant, you actually have to go through a bunch of legal review and make sure that you will never be like somehow feeling falling into this, this kind of like a legal pitfall and yeah. you get sued. And yeah, and there's because there's a lot of personal, private, important data that need to be uh, kept securely, safely. And for many business owners, it's not a, something they want to do them by themselves. Yeah. Yeah. And like, and like you said, like, I think that's important because those, those, I'm guessing, legal audits or verifications, I'm guessing that takes a lot of time. There's probably some manual things that have to happen. People, I don't have to drive to the office and, and give people a bunch of paperwork and, and have things verified. But instead, I can kind of rely on the power of Stripe to do that for me. Which for me now as a business owner, I'm like, oh, okay, well, I don't have to do this anymore. You know, I mean, I have to do it, but like, I don't have to physically do it. Like Stripe can do it for me. And then I could use the API, very developer friendly. So our developers could like very quickly be like, okay, here, verify this document, give me back the result. But then now I can kind of move on and continuously focus on like what my business is good at, right? So if I'm, I don't know, let's say, uh, let's say I'm, I'm a school, right? And I want to verify that my teachers are are safe people to have teaching at this school, right? And I want to do some types of checks on them. You know what I mean? Okay, hey, I can have that like integrated into the workflow, but then now I can continue going through, you know, the rest of the things that need to happen, right? Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Um, also, because as a merchant, you have a full control of when and where you would like to integrate this flow. For example, you probably don't want this thing as a, like a default because asking document from user that actually creates more frictions. Mm -hmm. But to some extent, you will say, okay, for those who are attempting making transaction, just say over $500, yeah. you can just like on demand bring things in flows just for additional verification process. Or you can just say, for example, see that you are building a, a babysitter platform. This is like actually use, real use cases. Yeah, You can provide the babysitter provider, like individual say, hey, if you upload your document you pass the verification we will put a batch on your profile and which is more likely that people will have more trust on the service you provided yeah yeah that makes a lot of sense so i have to ask you this right and i know this this might be this might be a weird question to ask but let's say i'm building my own social network and you know every social network has a little 
checkbox, blue, green, a verified tag or something like that yeah. underneath my name, right? Is, is that something I could use Stripe Identity for? From the perspective of I'm saying, okay, well, let me verify that this is a real person. You know what I mean? Let me verify that, you know, this, you know, they actually live here or their their ID is valid or whatever the case is. Can I be like, okay, hey, Stripe, verify this person for me? Not okay. verify as in like social verify, but verify as in like, okay, this is a really identified individual. And then now I can like enable that UI to like give me a checkbox. Is that a thing? Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. I, I think I let me probably just use Twitter as, as an example. I was trying not to, but okay. Let's yeah. Okay, sure. but that's like a, the concept that most people understand. It yeah, just yeah, yeah. In, the way to make it work is that the I think their goal is to prevent robots. They don't want a robot count, right? Mm -hmm. And one thing they did is that okay, you need to do two things. First thing is that you need to have a valid credit card, like to pay it. But second is that you actually need to provide something like a phone number, right? So they can actually send that. So what's interesting with phone number? Because mm -hmm. all the phone number they actually that's um, they can be associated with the real human name and right. also address. Uh, also on top of that, you can combine with the the credit card number that's being paid. You can cross referencing uh, the number address and uh, to make sure that this is actually the real use real user. You have a name address and also the phone number. Um, so Stripe and then yeah, actually has a similar uh, like service. Like in the, I think I probably can show that later in the documentation. You can say, oh, I want, I just want to set up the the phone verification. Just give me the the name and the number that user provided, and we'll take a, the the rest of the step for you, and we'll tell you that whether this user is legit or not. Do they pass the verification or not? Yeah. Right. And on top of that, because say that the flow involved taking user credit card because you wanted this thing to be a pay service to get that check mark. Then you can combine with the other Stripe API that deal with all the cash flow, like the payment flow, like can be a one time or a subscription. And in the back end, we have the service to analyze data to actually to tell you that whether this user can be a fraudulent or a computer, like some, someone legit. Okay, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. So I know, Hedra, I know you have a couple of demos for us, but before we do that, I did want to go over to the chat very quickly and see if we could like just get to some of these questions I see folks are asking. So um, first question I'm going to pop up, this one is from Jonathan on YouTube. Um, can I pass the cost of verification on to my customers? <laughs> That's a funny question. All right, so Jonathan, this is what I would tell you. We can't tell you how much to charge your customers for your thing. But um, I'm sure Stripe Identity has like some fee they charge, right? So could you, Hedger, could you tell us like on a ballpark, what, what is like the pricing model kind of look like for Stripe Identity? Uh, it's actually, it's a charge for like per volume. And I think it's uh, 50 cent, 20 cent. It's very low. Yeah. yeah. Also, the charge does not happen until actually users submit it. For, for instance, they say that user, they go to your website, Mm -hmm. And then they're like a they're fraudulent user. They're scared because they say that we ask them to upload some document and they say, oh, no, this is not right. going to work. They give up. You, you don't get charged for that. You only get charged for the real um, sub subscription submission of the document people verify. Yeah. And so also it's like one. charge per usage, right? So if you yeah, per just usage. having the API and the integration doesn't charge you, but like you actually have to, something yeah. has to happen, right? Like work has to happen. you can combine that it was your uh your own billing system. See that you're bu building this like your own social networks of blue check mark. Yeah, you can pass through that cost to your customer, but it's it's complete business decision that you can make yourself. Right. So again, that is a business decision. What you charge your customers is is completely up to you. <laughs> so there you go. You can kind of look at it from that perspective. But again, Stripe Identity, again, it sounds like it's fairly um, affordable for you to try out. So if you want to do that, um, feel free to go ahead and give it a try. Uh, next question, uh, Tim is asking, is this a REST uh, or GraphQL API? Uh, it's a great question. Uh, this is a part of Stripe.js API, and uh, I think probably I can just give you a, a quick demo. Like, yeah, okay. it's a REST API, but also maybe it's, can I just like switch to a quick demo? Yeah, sure. So go ahead, put, um, uh, let's get your screen ready. And for folks, if you all have any more questions for Hedger, go ahead and drop them in the chat. We'll try to, you know, get them queued up. Um, 
And then Hedger, whenever you're ready, just let me know. I'll switch over to your screen and we'll get these up. And again, folks, today we're talking about Stripe identity, not user ID, password identity, but more so like identity verification, right? Using like government documents and like some of these types of cool things. Okay. Um, Are you ready? Uh, hold on. Okay. Yeah, say one and then I will pop that. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm ready. All right, cool. So your screen is up. Um, so I see a, a web page with a verify button on it. Yeah. Uh, this is like a, just the number of JavaScript that you needed. Like I'm just using JavaScript as an example. Uh, in our uh, documentation pages, actually, there's a, a different integration pattern that you, can, you might be able to use for the language they're using. But I'm, I can show that link later. But okay. for now, it's just with this simple one. So. The first thing you would have to do is just include the JavaScript API, which is a standard um, Stripe JS API. And the second one, just putting some token, like an API token. You have it. Mm -hmm. This one is public, so I, I don't. I wouldn't mind if I just share it. And building UI, like for now, in this case, we need a button to it. And next thing is a uh, just I write some handler, which um, gives some instruction about what it's gonna do. And the first thing is that we talked about backend. Uh, I will go through the detail about how to you what this backend does, but for now it's like it's an API that returns some JSON response and we pass this response, which in include a secret token to the Stripe API, which is called uh, identity uh, verify identity. Then then we get the result. So yeah. here's uh, what it looks like here. Um, yeah, I'm just click it and we open the API. I um, mean, currently in test mode, so you'll probably. In production mode, you will never see this screen. Uh, you will proceed, and you can continue on these devices, and you can open the webcam. Yeah, this is what it looks like. Uh, just in case you're interested, um, we actually Stripe I think, has uh, this demo app. Also, I will share um, the URL later. Uh, this is the one that people can hang, actually can go through it. You can find the, the URL of this demo app on the Stripe documentation, which I will share later. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to go ahead and put that up on the screen too. Yeah. So folks I can... think I can do a demo later, but I this is just the code you needed. It's a JavaScript API. And the backend is something like this. You include the Stripe uh li library, then you you created the secret token and you pass back the front end. That's pretty much it. Yeah. yeah. And this is just like a Node.js code. We also have the Java version, also has the Ruby version, also has a Python version as well. Uh, the whole integration pattern follows the how Stripe documentation works. Yeah. Awesome. So if people want actual details of how to run it, then they could go to the Stripe documentation. But just looking at your code really quick, I mean, it doesn't look like there's a lot of code here to actually get verified, right? Like you have, you know, you initialize your Stripe clients, right? Yeah. This um, is where you get a result. So this 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 thing, at front end, you actually open the modal dialog, mm -hmm. and uh, and you wait for the user to do something for you, and and when it's done, you get a, this, this result on the front yeah. end. But on the back end side, you can also attach the the something we call webhook, which is literally just callback. You can have the back end to notify your service, say to mention that something is done or not. Yeah. Okay. So. So like you said, it's so like some work is going to be done in the front end. I'm guessing like taking pictures, uploading a document, something of the sort, right? And then yeah. we're going to have that Stripe modal to handle that for us. It's going to get sent to the Stripe servers, right? Yeah. Some stuff is going to happen, and then we'll fire off some webhook events. And so yeah. like you said, like in your server.js file that you have here in Visual Studio Code, um, yeah, if you can click on that super quick. So inside of here, we'll have the webhook that'll say, oh, okay, well, this thing is verified or not, and then we can handle that webhook. Yeah, it is true. Um, I think I probably can show you so how what that, that document do, looks like. Okay. Um, Stripe identity, this one. Hold on. Yeah. And I guess another thing to mention too, because people might be like, well, why do I need to listen to the webhook? Well, because I guess there's no, there's no, is there like a fixed time that this happens, right? Because it could take a second, it can take five seconds, it could take all depending on networking and so many other things, right? And so I think the webhooks give us like that way to, to handle it asynchronously so that we're not like blocking the rest of the UI and blocking the rest of the work while the verification is happening. Uh, so this is a great question. So first of all, like uh, the whole flow happened, it, it's uh, synchronous, mm -hmm. which means that, yeah, 
I can show you in the JavaScript side, you can wait for the result comes back like that. Mm -hmm. But also there's this thing called, which we call handoff, um, which is something like this. Um, okay, I'm probably just gonna show this one. And see that I want to, instead of doing the whole thing on desktop, I would rather do this thing on my mobile. So one thing I can do is that I take a photo of this QR code and I pr proceed it on, on different devices. Oh, nice. Yeah, and, and this is where you might take a longer time because, yeah. That, also, the web will allow you to not just to notify the, the, the session that you're currently at, but also actually allow you to broadcast to the signal to the entire system. Oh, right? nice. Yeah, for example, the JavaScript right here is like you're waiting for something directly coming after this session, right? right? But what about your entire application, like somewhere else, not within these current pages, you need to be notified. That's where the webhook will actually come handy because you can broadcast the signal to the entire system so you can do some post-processing. Yeah. Nice, okay. So and I honestly didn't even know we could do that. So I could, I could wait in process in the browser and I could wait for my results or it, like you said, if we had that QR code example, I could be doing some stuff on a website. I could like, I don't know, pull out my phone and I could scan it. And then now I'm doing like my document uploads, taking my picture, whatever the case is on my phone instead. Right. But then now once that's done, now I'm going to wait for the webhook in the back end to be like, hey, it was successful. It was not successful. It was, you know, the picture was blurry. Give me another one. Right. Like it'll let us know. And then we could continue with our workflow based on that. Yeah, that is true. Um, maybe you guys should just give it them on my mobile site. Oh, sure. Let's do that. That's okay. Uh, and then while you're doing that, again, folks, for folks that are still here with us, again, remember, if you have any questions at all, um, definitely feel free to go ahead and drop them in the chat. We'll make sure we ask them to Hedger as yeah. uh, as we go along. So uh, I'm doing like a li live stream on my desktop. Mm -hmm. Just Let me just close this. Um, so this is your real phone right now. Yeah, it's not like a real phone. So, so, if, just so if I called you, like this would ring, is what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah, it is. I hope nobody calls me right now. Okay. I'm not going to call you. I swear to God, I promise. Uh, yeah. So I'm just like doing the screen mirroring and I, I'm using the same demo site which I had it. So I'm clicking to verify me. Mm -hmm. And you open this exact same mode dialog which I had. Right. So I just click get it started. And I want to start with the driver license. And there's some consent. I need to verify it, agree with it. Um, so I just say accept, continue, allow camera access, which I'll grant the camera permission to it. So the first thing I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to take some photo of my um, fake driver license. Yeah, it's okay. just a same purpose. Uh, okay, there we go. So that's not really you, right? <laughs> oh, no, it's not really me. Yeah. Okay, that's not like you 20 years ago or anything. <laughs> no, uh, this is a thing we call auto capture. Uh, what it does is actually you would detect the document on screen and uh, on, on, on your camera and you will automatically capture it. Okay. And I say it looks good. The next thing we're going to do is to actually just flip the back side of it. So I'm going to pause, uh, switch this thing. It would decode the barcode and send everything to the back end. Hmm. Um, okay. uh, just let you know, because I'm using a fake ID, I'm like, once I submit it, the back end act, they will. I immediately analyze it and tell you that yeah, this is a fake user, but right. doesn't does not prevent me from submitting anything else. Um, so for this particular session, and um, we have something called uh, uh, biometric detection. So they say that we want to make sure that my face actually match the 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 face on the uh, driver license which I mm -hmm. use it. So this session is configured to be require a uh, selfie. So I'm just saying, okay, allow, and when you're going to take three um, selfie, one, two, three, and it was submitted. Yeah. So because I'm talking through it, it's been, so it takes a little bit longer, but actual process is pretty small. You can get like a whole verification done. Yeah. In less than like say a minute, like pretty quickly. Yeah. That's it. Gotcha. Okay. All right. So we do have, we do have a couple of questions. So let's, let's, uh, Let's see what folks in the chat are asking. Definitely a lot of questions coming in from YouTube. Yeah. Um, first one, uh, all right, so Dimitri is asking, so for which countries is this ready? US only or other country IDs are available? Uh, I think you should just go to the document side. Um, 
I would have like around around like 150 countries. Yeah, there's so many countries, um, mostly like uh, US and also uh, United Kingdom, Ireland, Germany, France, Spain, Italy, Netherlands, um, Sweden, Denmark. I mean, you can go on. Just go to the, uh, I think, let me share the website. Hold yeah. On. I mean, I won't, can I just pull? Okay. And, and Hedger, I think also to, like while you're doing that, like to also answer Dimitri's question. So like we have different types of lookups inside of uh, Stripe identity. So what, what Hedger is showing us right now is actually like the, an ID document, like uploading a document or and doing selfie verification. Um, and I believe those are available in, in a few different places. And here you go. Here's an example where he's showing us the availability from our docs. So as you can see, there's, you know, Ecuador, Belgium. There's a lot of countries here, right? I'm not going to name all these countries. There's a lot of countries yeah. that this is available in. Um, so if you head over to stripe.com slash doc slash identity verification checks, and you know what? I'll even put that up on the screen for y'all real quick. Stripe.com slash doc slash identity. And then we're going to look for, yeah, I'm just looking for the uh, verification checks. There we go. I'm going to put this link in the screen, right? So y'all can see it. Head over there, check it out, right? Yeah. But then you can go there. You can see some of the different countries uh, that some of these verification checks are used for. Now, I think the one thing to notice here, right? So if you know if you're actually on that document, um, there's different types of documents that are accepted, right? And hold on, let yeah. me let me move some things around on the screen because there's a lot, <laughs> there's a lot happening right now. But yeah, there's different types of um, verifications that are available. So again, there's documents, there's selfies, ID numbers, um, and then some other ones may or may not be coming in the future. But based on the type of verification you want to do, um, some countries are supported and some countries are not. So I believe the most coverage today is inside of our document one. Um, I think selfie also has a lot. I think if we want to do like an ID number lookup today, I think it's only in the US. So if you want to like look up someone by their specific uh, number, then, you know, that's only in US. But like if you're uploading documents and stuff, like there's a lot of different countries that can use. So like I said, head over to that document and you can take a look and see what that looks like. Yeah, across the many countries, I think it mostly common is the uh, passport and also driver license, but also yeah. in several countries such as, uh, um, Thailand and or like France, they have this thing called national ID. Singapore also has a national ID as well. Yeah. So yeah. we do have a, a way to extract the, the, the photo, decode the barcode, and extract like name or maybe address from those doc, uh, ID document. This mm -hmm. is something we call ident identity card right here. And it's yeah. really based on country by countries like that. And yeah. Or there's a, in the API configuration, you can just say, instead of explicitly ask users to say, just give me the social net, uh, like social security numbers, and we'll verify that with your name and address, something like that. Also, we uh, allow, we also keep, we're capable of verifying with a phone number. I think mm -hmm. you just mentioned that. So document verification is one thing, but also we can verify with a phone number and the name address associated with it. As well okay. yeah okay um one question um so coming in from youtube what's the data metal set you use for the selfie check look like so so could you talk to us a little bit about how the selfie check works do you have okay. any insight on that um so selfie check um like uh so how do we use it or how how do how how it is done I need to clarify. Well, I guess the person's asking, what's the data model set you use and how robust is it over? So so maybe talk to us a little bit about how it works so we can see what it looks like. And then I don't know if okay. you have any information about like okay, cool. I don't this know, is what the AI question. stuff it's doing yeah. to make that work. I would just say it's, uh, yeah, before I answer the question, I want to say what the use cases. Um, the first thing, one one thing in, also in the, in the API side, you can configure it. You can, you, there's an option just called uh, require face match. Which is that you when users taking selfie, you want to make sure that the the, the selfie actually match the the faces they extract from the documents. Like it can be a driver license, passport. Yeah. yeah. Also, the model we're using we're using with something internally we uh we we training and also we trying to uh trying to make sure that it, 
like all the data is capping within Stripe. We don't share with like any third party partner. But first of all, the second thing is that um, we we told something we, we extract the biometrics from your faces. For example, uh, the distance between your eyes or the lens over your nose, or like there's certain like a data point we can use it among we, which we collect from your faces. And we extract those biometrics data we, and then we compare with the database we build internally. Uh, for example, one of the uh, cases that we, we use a lot in terms of like detecting fraudulent is that if you see someone, per, the face appear on many different sessions, but with a different name, like it's this great chance that that user's face is fake. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, fake user. And we actually were able to use this in like a this is a simple detector to identify many of the fraudulent user. Yeah. Uh, secondly, is uh as a we with using like a different model and they have like a different granularity in terms of like a detecting like a people of different ages, uh different color, something like that. One of the common use cases is uh um yeah, like for a certain service that we provide it, like a, the merchant they use it, they want to make sure that people are over 21, for example. Okay. And you can do that by comparing their face and also visit, like say the, the document to see actually does it, does it match or not. Yeah. Yeah. So, and so let me know if this is accurate. So would you say, hey, I have uploaded some documents into this thing. Is the selfie check an additional check or is it, it like is the main check? Right. Okay. So then also, I upload my driver's license and I do a selfie check. So now, so now the model, right? The, the recognition algorithm is looking at both of these to see, okay, yeah. is this the same person or not? Yeah. Also, okay. another thing to note is that the selfie must be taken lively. That means you, you must be someone in front of the camera to do this thing. I'll say that you're building, uh, like say a babysitting or a house rental, like, right. You don't want people uploading fake photo and 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 so they can pretend they are someone else, right? And that's that's another reason that it's a recommended adding additional selfie check because you want a person to be real and lively. So it's it will be much much harder to pretend you are someone else when you're being asked to take live photos in front of the camera. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna take two more questions because uh, we have a lot of them coming in, and then we're gonna let you go. Uh, so Julian. Um, Thank you for coming in, Julian. Where where's the data stored? And what about GDPR? Uh, we are GDPR comp compliant, and in the okay. store within the data uh, Stripe network, like our own, own backend, and also uh, the data it's a uh, store. Also, it's a uh, it or it will not be stored forever. Like there's a uh, you can sh actually read through our uh, policy and guideline and to see, for example, for certain data we. For legal compliance issue, we must store them for three years. But also, we allow users to file or merchant per re on, on per request. So we would just delete data immediately. Yeah. So there's actually this API. If if you say for whatever reason you just don't want to keep this data forever, right? Yeah. And also legally, you're allowed to do it. You can actually just file the API after every single uh, verification session. Say so say delete data, and we would just drop the, delete, the data totally. Otherwise, I think uh, in normally we would just keep the data for three to five years. Depends on like uh, what kind of business is your end, and we we store it like within Stripe network, and so only uh, the administrator with the right permission can access the data. Okay, so then, so then there's a there's a an expiration date, like a reasonable expiration date on the information. But what about like the location? So like if I have customers from different parts of the world, where where would those IDs be stored? I for now I think it's mostly it's US. It's um it's in our like a data center. Um, mostly they are uh, US based. Yeah. But like you said, it is GDPR compliance. It is. You know we are. You know we're, yeah. we're good so actors. We we have uh. We have a lot of customers from Europe, Europe countries. So we must be a uh, GDP car. Also, right. not just uh, GDPR. I think uh, this is like a. I'm not a legal expert, but I sure. <laughs> GDPR is like a, just like a, the baseline of it. it. You only care about like the very surface level, but you actually need to be uh, PC and compliant. And a lot of like legal legal issue, you must be compliant. Yeah, because okay. uh, storing user credit. Number or name, this kind of like a very personal information is uh, 
the bar is very high. Right. Yeah. All right. Last question before I let you keep going. Um, Ishmael's asking, are there other mechanisms to customize the look and feel of the verification process to better match the look and feel of my brand? So can I can I change these colors and buttons and stuff and add logos to this thing? Yeah, it is. Um, so okay. if you're uh, you're an existing Stripe uh, customer, we allow you to customize the look and feel, including the the branding color, the icon. Yeah, and the, the one I showed in the demo green, simply because of this test user, we happen to pick green. Yeah. The color. Yeah, you're allowed to choose the font, the color, and also the logo for theming. And we are actively building a new uh, API to make it a lot easier for people to customize the entire thing of look and feel of the style. Yeah. Awesome. Great. All right. So we're going to keep the questions coming. We're going to get to some of them. But um, Hedra, I do want you to keep going because I know you're showing us some stuff. Yeah. I think the demo is pretty much of it. And uh, well, I think we're probably going to just go to the uh, documentation flows from Stripe okay. Identity or something like this. If you search for Stripe Identity, okay, one. Yeah, this is where you get it started. And in case you want to try the, the demo app, this is like when you cl click this try it now, you will open the demo app you would. But also I encourage that you can start with just, if you have then just uh, apply for a Stripe account and you get through this uh, onboarding flow, yeah. then you actually get a free, um, like a you can, you can create like a, session like a verification session for free like i think it is like first 50 of them it's yeah. free and also encourage you just explore the integration docs and uh, it's the setup is pretty easy actually i just built this demo this morning uh, it's been like five minutes oh did you that's awesome yeah to get that thing done quickly so i think this is how i think the how you people could try to start it yeah and okay. yeah i think it's a it really depends on your, uh, your your business need. Like for example, if you you want to make sure that you want to prevent fraudulent use cases, or you want to build out something building the trust among your customer and a uh, service provider, yeah, and you want to be legal legally compliant with the regulations, yeah, this is like something you 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 can you should consider using it. Yeah, yeah. So so I guess kind of like to to recap. I mean, really quickly. So. Obviously, there's Stripe integration, but like there's a lot of different ways that you could, you know, verify identities. You know, document facial recognition. You have the mobile use case that you showed us. You know, um, obviously compliance, and you know, we're designed to you know, be G GDPR compliant, PCI compliance, and some of these other types of things, right? We can customize the look and feel. Was another question I know folks were asking for, really quick. Um, and it looks like someone in the chat says is asking, um, does this work? inside a mobile app too and i actually have a i have a um, answer for you i actually had this queued up but thank you for <laughs> for uh for prompting that so we actually have some videos on our stripe uh youtube channel stripe developer youtube channel and so if you check out this as one example like we you know we have a react native sdk we have sdks for ios and android so if you are wanting to add identity verification into your mobile apps that is yeah, that is also definitely an option. Like what Hedge is showing us right now is the web version, but we do have videos that show you how to do it from mobile apps, at least from React Native apps as well. And so, again, just like everything else, right? Like definitely make sure you check out our documentation because, you know, we could show you that for Android and iOS and so on and so forth, right? So you could see like how to do some of these things. Yeah. Maybe I can share this uh, integration. Oh, one. sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if you go to this documentation and there's a, like a different way to verify it. Uh, uh, there's a web version, which I just show you. Of, of, of course, we have this iOS and also Android native SDK. This will allow, we actually bring the native uh, UI view of like iOS or Android. Also, we have a, a React Native implementation of it. Also, we have no code solution. You just go to the Stripe dashboard and which you actually will generate this like one-time use link and you can send that link to your customer and they will just start a verification flow and you don't have to write any code at all. Like you don't need, need to build your own website. You can just use this as a verification and you can manage the entire session on your uh, Stripe dashboard. So that's another way to mention it. Yeah. Awesome, awesome, awesome. All right, let's see. Let's see if we have any more questions from folks uh, showing up in the chat super quick. Um, 
Let's see. Da, 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 da. Um, Diego's asking, do we get charged for every single verification? Um, yeah, do you know how that, and I think we, we talked about pricing just a little bit, but do you know how the usage billing works, Hedger? Okay, uh, let me read the question a little bit in detail. Yeah, yeah they're asking do we get charged for every verification. Yeah. yeah, if it fell flow, for example, uh, they only charge upon the, the event when users actually submit it. Which is like the the, the fi very final step. If in between, for whatever reason they drop out, or maybe for instance, like uh, this happens a lot. Is like a uh, someone has a driver license, but it doesn't look very clear because, or there's some like quality issue. For instance, like they it, there's like damage on the service, and they have to use something different, like change to a passport or just remove the cover. That is fine. It doesn't matter. It's not charged by like how much time, how many try retry they've been attempting to. You only be charged upon submission, and which is only happen once per session. Got yes. It. Okay, there we go. So let's see. Any other questions? Let's see what we got. Um, scrolling, 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 scrolling. Uh, literally everything is asking. Also, does it also verify documents using smart card readers or only photos? Photos. Yeah. yeah. Uh, for those who don't know what smart card reader is, it's like, kind of like a you know the credit card has this like a chip. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You actually need to tap it, and so and you can then you can read some data out of the chip and also send something to it. Uh, but we what we are offering is actually more like a cloud solution. So yeah, it's all image photo based. Um, for now, I think uh, the the all of, all of the government who like regardless of like uh, the region the area that came from, some like for example the Thai. Uh, Thailand, like national ID, they do have a chip, like for newer version. Mm -hmm. The front side and back side, on the back side, actually, they have a chip. You do need to read it for it. But also on the front side, they also put everything on the front side. The barcode, the barcode, the number, the face, everything you need it. So for now, we don't have access to the car reader, smart reader. Also, I don't think anyone, people will actually have that kind of reader at their home. But also, we don't worry about that because we can just use the photo. Yeah. Okay. Um, literally everything has another question. Um, can this be used without Stripe payments or do you need to have Stripe payments active to use it? Uh, you don't need Stripe payment, payment at all. Like uh, you all you have to just create a Stripe account. So you can use this account to go to the dashboard to manage the session you created. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Everything else is optional. You don't have to use it like Stripe checkout, Stripe payment, all this kind of thing. You don't. Right. But also, there's a benefit. Like, underneath it, we're still looking thing holistically. We can say that a user provides a name and also some address. If we notify that, notice that, oh, for that name, specific name or address, or maybe the IP address can be associated with some certain fraudulent behavior, we'll let you know. Yeah. But as a customer, you don't have to be like using the like a Stripe payment or everything at all. Yeah. Okay, cool. Uh, I think that makes sense. Um, Hedger, what about um, what about Stripe Terminal? Uh, is there is there a way to connect identity with terminal transactions or like or uh, nothing? Nothing. I mean, that actually the in-store device that people are using for like yeah. A checkout. yeah. I'm. I don't think so. Yeah. I don't think so. I think mean, terminal is more like a payment thing, but also I, I feel like the use use case for in stores seems to be less common because you actually see someone face to face, real in, as like a real person, right? Also, yeah. it'd be weird to ask for real ID, but <laughs> unless you're selling something, I don't know, alcohol, maybe. Mm, yeah. Yeah. Like, for alcohol. Yeah. Like. Yeah, but if, what we're focused on is actually is more like online transaction. So uh, most of our customer actually they're trying to expanding online business, and they're really struggling with like how do they know their the customer are, are legit. Yeah. For example, uh, yeah, there's like many online marketplaces allow people to sell, uh, or exchange or rent um, um, expensive uh, uh, assets. Such as like a book a meeting room or like rent a car, 
or provide some in-person service. And that's where you people need to verify someone's identity online because that's how the business could scale with a reasonable low cost. If right. you have to hire someone, always talk to the potential customer to ver verify their, their person they are, the cost will be very, very high. So you definitely don't want, you, you do want to automate that kind of process. Yeah, online transaction. Yeah, I'm actually looking through our docs right now because um, you know that's what we do when we're on live streams. Um, and I think this this is what can happen, right? Because if you if you create a payment intent, you can attach a customer to a payment intent, and then now that payment intent can be processed by the terminal. But like the verification that Stripe identity is not going to be on the terminal device, right? Like so, you would have had to have I don't verify it before <laughs> or in, on the web thing and then, you know, bring the terminal device to actually do that work. Um, but yeah, whenever you create your um, payment incense, you know, you can attach a verified customer. So maybe you do your verification and be like, hey, this is a over 18 person or not, whatever the case is. Right. And then yeah. now you send like that payment intent to the terminal device to process it. Maybe, maybe that's a different workflow or another way that you could think yeah, about it. Yeah, that's a different but, um, workflow. Uh, if you're talking about online, for instance, uh, uh, if you can actually manage the, the threshold of how would you like to trigger this like a fraudulent flow? For example, if you're doing small transaction, pretty fine. But if someone somehow just like trying to make a like, couple thousand transaction and that uh, verification flow just kicks kissing. Like before you do the payment, you ask you, you are the person who you are. Of course, uh, it's all configurable in the part of the like, entire uh, payment flow if you want to do that. Yeah. Yeah. But for a terminal, I don't think so. Yeah. Okay. That makes sense. Uh, what else do we got? Literally everything is asking uh, can you parse the data from the ID to get the expiration date and state it? In the data oh, um, yeah. I don't, we, we do that you could you could it's a story in our backend yeah right but, in our backend but like we like the user like our customers they don't get that id information right is no because okay. there you go uh, it's not like we cannot it's uh for legal issue right right, right. so again, to, to answer that question right like say that like we have it yeah. you don't if have i'm it. a store your name you know, like my user's name or address or phone number, any kind of personal application, then you have, as a merchant, you have to go through entire like a GDP, not just GDPR, but a bunch of like a legally compliant issue. Right. Yeah. Okay. I mean, most merchants are, I mean, at this point, they don't, they, what they only care about is uh, whether this customer is legit or not. Right. Yeah. Right. That's fair. That's fair. That's fair. Yeah, man, we had a lot of questions coming in. This is amazing. Um, Hedger, can you talk to maybe, What are some of the things that your team is considering that we could talk about publicly? <laughs> is there anything like, you know, now, now that folks know how to use Stripe identity, like, are, is there anything that they could look forward to, you know, new features, bells and whistles, SDKs, anything of the sort? Uh, yeah, there's a lot of things we're considering. Um, the first thing is like one, one of most important, I think, is uh, uh, expansion, global expansion. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like um, like European expansion. We want to actually support not just support uh, the, the country we support it. We we definitely want to support more, more of like a like the, the short answers are like we don't support every single country you can see in the world. So we yeah. we're looking actively to support more countries. Yeah, that's the one. Also, every single country they have their own dedicated type of documents, and also legal requirement. And getting through them is very challenging. But we're trying really hard actively trying to make sure that we have more coverage expansion yeah so we can offload the hard work from the merchants that's one thing we can do uh another thing i think we're prioritizing for uh customization flow um mm -hmm. it's uh we want to provide more customization flow so individual merchant that can actually not just specify the type of the content they would like to uh verify but also specify the way how they want to verify. Like, for example, say that you want to support a uh, verification with a passport, but there's a case is that, as a, for, say that you're a car rental company 
and they won't only look for driver license for U.S. resident. But if you are not U.S. resident, they won't look for a driver license, international driver license plus passport. So there's like a, this kind of like a case by case, uh, business specific flow, and that needs a lot of customization. And we want to provide sort of self service tool for people to do that. And that's something we're also considering doing actively. Actively. Uh, okay. Um, let's see what 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 are folks in the chat asking? Um, do, 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 let's see. Um, question. <clears throat> excuse me. Question from YouTube: Is this included with Core Stripe, or is it a separate application process to get access to the verification? Um. So, do you have to do anything extra to get Stripe identity, or once I have a Stripe account, can I just start making a request? Yeah. Oh, you, the minimum is it. <laughs> Just get a Stripe account. Yeah. Yeah. And of course, to get account, you have gone through the onboarding process, which you have to verify that you're a legit merchant, right? And I think going through the onboard process, you probably will experience the, the flow of provide some document to verify that you're a legit merchant. Yeah. But once you get that, you're, you're good to go. OK, awesome. Well, Hydra, we have just about five minutes left. Um, so I want to give you the chance to, you know, if there's anything that you'd love for folks to do now the, you know, now that they see what this is and they kind of get a better understanding of what the space that Stripe identity kind of occupies, like what would you love for folks to do as like next steps into like plugging some of this stuff in? Yeah, I, I think that the one thing definitely encourage you just uh, go to our like a, the single portal, just Stripe on it, Stripe.com. Identity. That's it. Mm -hmm. Okay. This URL short. Yeah, and it has a lot of document uh, example. And next thing is uh, fi figured out whether this the uh, uh whether it can help it with your uh business. Like either you can build trust and safety, and uh, also prevent fraudulent user, and also uh have a way you can expand your business to more uh, online users. Like uh, so, and you don't have to worry about that like fake user, fake account, this kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah, and then create account, and then start with like a, a free test uh, credit. Like the first 50 sessions, I it, they are free. Also, if you're using test mode, it's always free. Yeah. OK, awesome. All right, folks. Well, that's the show for today, man. Thank you all so much for, for joining us. Again, we do Jeff Chats weekly. Uh, today's a special case. Today's Monday. Um, and so we wanted to make sure that you know we got Hedger in front of you guys to kind of learn a little bit about what we're doing with Stripe Identity. But again, we do Jeff's chats every week, um, usually on a Wednesday. So we'll be back again here this Wednesday. I think this Wednesday, we're talking to Tom Hugh about um, code coverage, which should be a really interesting conversation. Code coverage with CodeCov and you know how it plugs into GitHub and workflows and securing your pipelines and things of that nature. So um, definitely make sure you're back and check that out. Um, if you have any questions, you can add us at, at Stripe Dev on, on Twitter. Um, we're on, obviously, we're here on YouTube. You can leave some comments in the, the YouTube video if you have any questions. Um, but other than that, again, thank you all for being here. I really appreciate it. And again, if you all build anything with, um, you know, with Stripe Identity, we'd love to hear about it. Cool. So, Hedger, thank you, man. I appreciate it. And thanks, everyone. That's a wrap, folks. Take care, everybody. Bye. <laughs>